let's talk about calzone now, all right? So our pizza dough is always the same. The dough we're, we're gonna use is the same. This is a beautiful pot, cast iron on the inside, enamel coated on the outside, all that great stuff, right? We're gonna use a pot like this and we're gonna create a sauce. This is gonna be a slow cooked sauce, all right? Slow cooked, and this sauce is, again, we're gonna cook it down to the point where um, it's not pasty, but it's gonna be pretty thick. And again, the idea being that we don't want a lot of excess moisture inside of the calzone that we don't need. So we're gonna cook as much of that water out as we can. The good news is that I'm using some really awesome ingredients over here, all right? Let me show you the first one because we're gonna talk about our sauce. So I'm using a sauce, for an Italian tomato sauce from a company called Muti. These are Roma tomatoes that come from Parma, Italy. They're very, uh, they're, they're sweeter tomato. There's not very much acidity to them. And these are whole peel tomatoes or what we call pilati, pilati. All right, so what we're gonna do to this, we have to create the bed of what we're gonna add this sauce to first. And the important ingredient is our onions. This has some, uh, some uh, Spanish onion. I've got an onion over here. I've got a half of an onion. This is a large onion cut in half, all right? Now when we cut this, the technique of cutting this, I wanna make these strips just like this, all right? So we've cut off the, the north and the south pole of the onion, all right? And what I wanna do is I wanna cut along this, um, uh, the way that the, the hemispheres are, right? So what I'm gonna do is against this, I'm just gonna make these slits probably about a quarter inch thick is what I'm looking to make, okay? And then naturally, because of the way the onion has all of its layers, naturally it's gonna make all of these uh, kind of like uh, strips of onion just like that, all right? When you get to the edge over here and if you're worried your knife, knife skills aren't that good and you're worried about cutting yourself, just turn the onion on its side and continue to make those cuts just like this. The idea being that we're going a quarter inch and, uh, and again, just be safe, right? That's uh, safety first, that's what we say. Now, I've got all these onions just like this. To the pot, what we're gonna add, I'm gonna take uh, a couple tablespoons. I've got that, uh, that Sicilian olive oil we're gonna use again. This uh, manner of making this sauce, again, is another one I can't take credit for. This is a very, very old sauce recipe typical for this, very typical for another uh, pan pizza called a sfincione, which is this sauce uh, with some breadcrumbs on top and some cacio cavallo. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful pizza. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of olive oil, okay? And then to this, all of my onions would go into this pot, right? Now, this would go really nice and slow. I've got uh, some sea salt over here. You've got all the quantities in the recipe. I would add the sea salt. I would go really nice and slow on top of the, cook, uh, the, the, the stove. And I wanna cook these onions down, not till they're brown, but I wanna cook them down until they're soft and translucent. Once you have them soft and translucent, we're gonna need to use some anchovy fillets. Now, those of you who freak out about anchovies, you gotta understand that this is not in here to give this dish a fishy flavor. The anchovy filet is gonna give you more of that umami. It's gonna be a, a beautiful flavor in the background that's gonna open this up. It's gonna give it complexity, but I promise you it will not taste fishy. So to this, once we have the onions all sweated down, you're gonna have a little bit of that oil remaining. We're gonna take the anchovy filet, stick them inside, or if you're concerned and you wanna chop them up very fine, you can do that as well, okay? So you can either chop them up or add them inside to the oil, all right? So these are gonna go inside. We're gonna let these cook a little bit. While it's cooking, we're gonna break these up with uh, our spoon. And then from here, I've got some, uh, the tomato sauce. I wanna show you these tomatoes real fast because this is one of those things that I tell people all the time. When you're sourcing your ingredients, Source the best ingredients that you can afford. We understand everybody's on a budget. Some people can you know, afford to splurge once in a while. In my opinion, again, if you're gonna do this, I would rather do it when I could buy the ingredients that are gonna be really high end because the tomato is really important. I'm gonna try to do this without splashing all over my white chef coat. Now, I'm gonna take these, uh, these tomatoes and I'm gonna move this bowl to the side. And I wanna stick these inside. I wanna show you a couple of these tomatoes just like this, all right? 
The beautiful thing about whole peeled tomatoes, especially about the Italian ones, all right, is that when you look at these, I'm not cherry, but I'm just picking them the way they came out. They're whole, right? If I was to take some of this beautiful puree off, you'll notice that the puree and the tomato are the same color. This is another really important thing, meaning that the puree came from the same type of tomato as the whole peel tomato actually is. You'll also notice that I'm holding this up and it's not pouring and oozing water out of it, right? If I take this, turn it to the side very gently, watch my hands, right? I'm opening this tomato up and there's very little liquid that's coming out, just a few drops, right? Again, this is a really good sign that to the tomato was picked at the right point in the harvest. It wasn't too early, it wasn't too late. The other thing I'm going to tell you when you source Italian tomatoes is look at the ingredient statement on the back. Good Italian tomatoes should only have Italian tomatoes on the ingredient statement. If they're adding things like basil, like basil is great if you want to save some time. It gives a beautiful flavor, but there's a lot of times when companies will add uh, basil into their products to cover or mask an inferior product. If you see things like um, citric acid, potassium chloride, all these other types of ingredients, again, they're picking the tomatoes at a different point in the harvest. They're speeding up the process, and that's the reason why they add these to the can. So find yourself a really good tomatoes. Uh, a tomato, I use Muti 100% here at the school. They're very pretty easy to find nowadays at the grocery store, and this is the tomato I'm using. So once this everything is on the stovetop, okay, we cook this down. Now the anchovy filet is broken down. My, uh, my onions are beautiful and translucent. I would go and I would pour all of my tomatoes inside of this bowl. I would pour them in whole. And now I would increase the heat until this kind of all comes to a, uh, a nice, uh, get a, not a rolling boil, you know, but we want to start seeing it move around. And as you continue to stir the sauce with your spoon, the tomatoes will begin to break apart and they'll be nice and chunky. As you continue to stir, okay, all of a sudden everything kind of marries together and you're going to create this beautiful cooked sauce that to me this is another one of those types of sauces that my mother would make fresh pasta, maybe a pappardelle or something like this and this is the type of sauce that she would finish that with um, or if we were making a baked pasta this could work really well. So again this is a really old technique for making sauce and then the last thing that we would do we've got just a little bit of oregano at the very end finish this off okay and then I'm going to take all this move it to the side through the magic of television here is our finished sauce, okay? So this is all ready to go. And you can see how beautiful this is. The color is a very, that rich, nice, beautiful red color. The, uh, the, the onions are, are soft. Um, again, there's nothing that's gonna be fishy or that flavor of the anchovy, that's not in here. Uh, the tomatoes have some texture to them still. And again, it's pretty thick, okay? So this is really important so that we don't see that the inside of our calzone is gonna be just floating all over the counter. What are your thoughts on if you had to leave the anchovies out of the sauce? Is there something you would, would you clean them out? Would you replace them with anything? I would say if it's for you personally that you don't want to put anchovies in there, I get it. Don't put them in. But if you're making this for your family and you have people coming over, I'm telling you, put the anchovies in there. They'll never know. And this sauce is even more better. That's the only way I can tell you. I promise you it won't taste fishy. Don't freak out that there's an anchovy filet in there, right? But it's, gonna, it's just, again, it adds that complexity. It's a little salty, uh, briny, that kind of thing. And it just opens the whole sauce up, right? So that's, I would tell you, just take it out or use it, but make your decision. There's really nothing to replace it with, okay? Now, somebody else was curious about how you like to store your anchovies if you don't use the whole. So I always get anchovies that are packed in olive oil, okay? I get fillets, not the ones that are curled up in a little kind of like spiral thing, right? So once I have them, they come and packed in oil. I leave them in the can with the oil, right? And then I'll peel off as many of those anchovies as I need. If you have a can that's really small and you have a few anchovies left over, Put the, uh, put the anchovies and the oil in a small bowl or a small container. Top off the anchovies with a little bit more oil so that they're underneath submerged. And those will stay, uh, it's one of those things, anchovies I feel like last a really long time. They don't last a long time in my house because I really love anchovies. But, uh, you know, again, if you get a small can of anchovies, you know, you could figure easily six months it'll be in the refrigerator. You don't have to worry about it. They'll stay nice and fresh. The next thing that we're going to do is our filling, our ricotta filling. 
So what I have over here, I've got some, uh, some ricotta cheese. This is a fine ricotta cheese. Um, this actually comes from Wisconsin, a company called Grande. Uh, sometimes if you go to the grocery store, you might be able to find uh, their ricotta in the, um, in the deli section. If you can't find it, I would definitely tell you to search for ricotta cheese that's smooth. We're not looking for the hand-dipped style that's got all the little bits of the curd, right? Something smooth, maybe the same one that you would use for cannolis or anything like that. I've got a couple, uh, two cups of ricotta. To this, I've got another half a cup of Parmesan cheese. I've got uh, a half a cup of half and half or heavy whipping cream. I prefer heavy whipping cream, right? I've got some chopped flat leaf parsley, Italian parsley. I've got a little bit of sea salt. Don't put too much salt because again, this will get pretty strong. And then I've got uh, some garlic. I like to do about one clove of garlic over here, right? And what I'm gonna do is cut the end off. And then if you've never uh, chopped garlic in this manner before, I'm actually gonna give this a little smack with the back of my knife, flattening this out. And then I'm gonna butt the knife up against my fingers and I'm gonna make these very fine chop all the way across. And then from here, I'm gonna take the knife and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna push the knife down onto the counter and it's is gonna kind of flatten everything out just like this. At this point, if I take just a little bit of sea salt, sea salt is abrasive, right? And it's gonna be kind of like making a sandpaper, if you will, and scrubbing the top of this. So every time I kind of press down here like this, it'll kind of stick It'll kind of break the garlic down. I can give this again, just a nice quick chop. And then again, very fine, back and forth with the knife. And this garlic, all of a sudden, all of those essential oils of the garlic come out. So one clove of garlic is really all we need. And then once you have this all down like this, this will make kind of like this really fine paste, right? And uh, again, the idea being that we're gonna mix this now into our ricotta filling, my uh, pizza dough. I'm gonna give this just a sprinkle of flour, just like this, and then using my hand, I'm gonna hold it upside down, and this releases out of the bowl, very nice and simple. And then to here, I'm gonna give this a little dusting of flour, getting it out of the way. And then just again, using the same technique with my fingers, I'm gonna just give this a press, all right? Starting in the middle, working my way to one edge, flipping it over, working my way to the other edge, and then I take the whole thing, flip it 90 degrees, and do the same thing over, flip it again, go the opposite way. Now this one we're gonna do a little bit different because we're not looking, well calzone is kinda like a half moon, right? It's not gonna be a rectangle, it's gonna be kinda like this half moon shape. I'm gonna take again just a little bit of this olive oil just like this, and the idea being that the dough is gonna slide really nice and easy on the counter, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna press this out I'm a size dough like this, it's about 400 grams, okay, 412 grams. A size dough like this would easily make me about a 14 inch pizza, okay. Now, what we were going to do, I'm going to stretch this out to about 12 inches, a nice 12 inch circle, just like this, okay. So far, so good? Yeah. Okay, now, if you've got any questions, yell them out. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some of this ricotta filling. You have a decision to make. We're gonna work on half of this dough. We're not gonna spread the filling all over the top. For me, I normally prefer to work on the section of the dough that's closest to me, but today, so you can see, I'm gonna work on this half of the dough because then I'm gonna fold it over and I'm gonna show you how we crimp it, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some of this ricotta filling and I'm gonna put it just like this in the middle. This is almost like whipped. It's very nice and light and creamy and this is, again, we want to make sure that there's enough filling inside over here to, uh, to, to make sure that when we cook this, that when we take it out, it stays nice and high, just like the stromboli. It doesn't come down like a pancake, okay? So now like this, there's no mozzarella inside of this. This is a traditional calzone. There's other people that make calzone with mozzarella and they put all kinds of uh, toppings and whatever inside. This is a traditional calzone as you'd find it, let's say, in New York, okay? Now, my calzone has got its ricotta inside. The next thing that I'm going to do, let me get a uh, spoon. 
I'm going to take some of this beautiful sauce that we made, all right? And the idea is that now you've got the onions and the garlic and the tomatoes and all that, and you've got this texture. I've even made this many times. My mother's made this plenty of times where when we're cooking this down, we put some chopped olives inside over there. And again, this makes a, just a beautiful, wonderful sauce. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of spoon this sauce all over the top, just like this. And don't worry if you fall out a little bit, okay? The idea being, though, there's going to be a nice amount of filling to this. On this side over here where I got this a little wet, don't be too afraid about that because this wet area or it being a little damp, this is going to help the two seams come together. It'll make it a little tacky and it'll actually seal a little better, all right? So now that this is in here, the last ingredient, I'm using some Italian sausage. Now, this is Italian sausage that we took out of the casing. So it was a rope. We opened it up. We took the casing off, right? And then what's left in the middle, we put it inside a skillet and we browned it off, almost like it was ground beef or taco meat, something like that. I like to use this manner, method because, again, it gives us a little bit more of that fat rendered out of the sausage so that it's not going to end up in here, that it's overly greasy and watery and all that kind of thing. Um, but I do like to cook this where it's still just a little pink on the inside because this will finish cooking on the inside. And I got I to gotta admit, I love a little bit of that pork grease, that pork uh, fat inside and that's really got a lot of flavor to it as well so what i'm going to do i'm just going to take a little bit of this italian sausage just like this if you want to keep this uh vegetarian and you don't want to put any sausage just omit it right you don't have to put this if you uh, say you know could we make this with uh, pepperoni or some other kind you want to put some spicy soppressata in here do whatever you want it's your house you're going to make yourself and your friends happy do it you're cooking at home and this is the whole point of this right so go ahead we've got all our filling in here the last thing that we need we'll just give this a nice sprinkle of parmesan on top and then i'm going to take the side from here and i'm going to fold this over the edge okay and the idea is that we want to fold this in a manner and i'm going to do a, a, a braid on this as well we can easily take this line up the two seams so that they're even and press them all the way around okay that's going to give us one look but if we take the bottom layer of dough and kind of pinch this forward a little bit okay so that the bottom is sticking out a little bit farther than the top okay i'll start in the section closest to you i can take my finger just like this and pull the dough and press into the top layer pull and press and do this all the way around and we're going to have this beautiful braided edge, just like this, okay? And then once we do this, we've, you see this a lot in pizzerias. You know, if you go to the mall even, you know, you go to that one pizza joint at the mall. You've probably seen this a million times. I'm going to bring this closest to you, okay? So you can see this in front of you. And again, I'm going to go really easy, just so I'm going to redo my work, make sure everything is nice and tight over here. And the idea being that, I'm actually smashing the heck out of this right now. What I'm going to do, maybe I'll go on the side, I'll give this a little pinch all the way around. Okay, now I've got this edge just like this. I can feel that it's, it's opening up underneath a little bit. No problem. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take another sheet pan with a little bit of parchment just like this. And then from here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift this whole thing up very gently and I'm gonna lay this onto the pan. Now this is the last time that you're gonna to be touching this. So you could stretch this a little bit longer, right? And uh, this pocket over here where the seam is, I could feel that the, the filling, I went a little too far over the side and it's kind of popping out. So we know this is gonna run a little bit on the edge, not a big deal. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna turn this back towards me. I'm gonna take my egg wash, just like this. Speak a little bit louder. Okay, I'm gonna take the egg wash and again, just like the last one, we're going to brush the whole top of this with the egg wash. Make sure we get the sides really nice. And again, make this really nice and uniform. We shouldn't be saturating this with egg, but again, we want just enough to get that nice little shine to it. And then when this goes inside of the oven, this is actually going to puff up a little bit as well. So it's going to look really nice and full. And again, the nice thing about working on the parchment paper is that let's say you don't seal this enough, right? And a little bit of that filling does happen to ooze out. 
it's not the end of the world because everything again is on top of the paper and it'll slide off just like the uh, Stromboli did. I'm going to stick this back inside the oven. So you don't, somebody's asking you don't need to cut any holes? I'm not going to cut holes. That's actually a great question. So like I had just mentioned, if I keep this the way it is, it's going to puff up, okay? I like to have that little bit of an opening because when it puffs up, it kind of gives this kind of steam chamber on the inside and it'll force all of those ingredients to kind of melt together. If you wanted, you could have easily taken that as it is and make some slits on top of it. I'll tell you what, let's pull this off. Let's do it right now. I think it's a good thing to show. It was a great question, whoever uh, asked it, okay? So what are you gonna do? We got this just like this, we just pulled it out. We'll take our knife just like this and we'll make a couple of these just kind of cross cuts just over the top and uh, make sure that we can see just a little bit of the filling on the inside. And uh, again, the idea is that now what we've created, instead of that steam staying on the inside, it's gonna come out the top, all right? And it's gonna look like a uh, volcano on top, right? Because all that steam is gonna be coming out. So this is gonna stay more flat when it comes out of the oven. If you want it to be a little bit puffier, don't make the slits, but this is pretty traditional as well. So I'm gonna stick this into the oven. This here is looking fantastic. I'm gonna show this to you from the side over here, how beautiful and nice and golden brown this is. This is the same, we're gonna do the same rule on this one. We're not gonna cut into this right away. I wanna give this a few minutes to set up because all that beautiful ricotta cheese and the tomato sauce and everything is gonna ooze right out the side. So we wanna give this an opportunity to set up let it sit five, 10 minutes, and then cut into this and we'll put it on a platter and serve it for your guests. This makes a beautiful item that you can cook anytime. You can make these a lot much smaller and, uh, and serve these individually. And uh, you, we've even done these ahead of time where we've made them, we froze them, and then let them thaw out and then pop them in the oven. They're very quick like that as well. So everybody, thank you so much. On behalf of all of our friends at Red Star Yeast, We'd like to thank you for joining us today. Uh, I really appreciate uh, Baker Betty being here. And uh, on behalf of all of us at the North American Pizza and Culinary Academy, we hope to see you in class very soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.